How much, um, it was just one win against an overmatched opponent. I get it. But just how different does everything feel when, when you guys start to have something positive that you can fixate on and look at and some good tape to look at? I uh, mean, it's, it's always the, good to have a, a great win, especially uh, as, big as, we, as big as we did because at this point, uh, points matter. And uh, so it's good to get big wins and, uh, you know, just feed off of that energy. Like we know what we can do and know what we're capable, capable of, and we've seen that. I know this is your first time here, but you also know what people – traditionally at the Olympics think of USA basketball and the chances and how they're always called an overwhelming favorite. And you get here and they're talking about Spain and they're talking about Australia and they're talking about Slovenia now in a weird way. Is that kind of helping you guys a little bit that there's a lot of, I don't want to say chatter, but there's, it's that aura of invincibility isn't there that maybe past U S teams have had in a weird way. Is that, Kind of fueling you guys a little bit. I mean, it does, but at the end of the day, it just shows like our our game is becoming more international than uh, it used to be, and uh, it just makes it more competitive. I feel like it makes it more fun. You know, uh, <clears throat> it definitely puts us on edge because we don't go into every game thinking we're going to beat everybody by fifty. So it definitely keeps us on edge, and you know, definitely shows us that. Uh, we we can't mess around. Thank you, sir. Next up, we'll go to Josh Coyne and then Tyler Boronski. Hi, Bam. Um, obviously, you've just touched upon the fact that the that many of the teams around the tournament are performing really well. We've seen incredible performances. Uh, from a multitude of teams. The priority will always be focusing on yourself, but how much is your team paying attention to other games that are happening? I mean, we're watching every game. Uh, when we have dinner, uh, when we have meals, we we're watching other games just, you know, because we don't have a lot of film on guys. So <clears throat> just to get a feel for how they play and uh, sitting there watching the games, just, you know, looking at little stuff, looking at tendencies, uh, looking at the plays that run, how they defend certain things, and you know, just getting just getting ahead of that before we actually play them. Okay, thank you, Tyler. Go ahead, and then we'll go to Fago Franklin. Hey, Bam. Uh, we were just talking to Dame a bit about Simone. You know, you guys spend so much time working on your craft at a nonstop rate, and with that has come, you know, success but attention, expectations all the time. How much of a challenge is that to separate yourself from your sport, your accolades um, for you? I mean, it, it, it's to a point it's difficult because, I mean, you, you are so in tone to your work ethic, your diet, like your, your life kind of revolves around that and uh you know you forget that you are you're human like you you forget that you know it's okay to take time away from this you know because we're always on edge of i don't want to be second i don't want to be second like we've always got that number one mentality that you know we forget that we need a break and uh we we, we need some time to chill to ourselves Pago, you're up, and then we'll go to uh, Akiko Yamalaki. Hey, how you doing, Bam? What advice could you give the 2020 NBA draft class on being prepared for that next level in life, but going into the NBA? And for you, what do you think you need to improve on to take it to that top tier level? Uh, for them, just uh, soaking as much knowledge as you possibly can. I mean, from watching film to, you know, just actually being an NBA, you know, it's going to be a whirlwind. Like everything's going fast. Like right now they're probably thinking like, yo, I was just in college playing, playing games. I'm finna be in the NBA. It's kind of like that for me. Now I'm finna go into year five. Uh, you know, I felt like I just yesterday I was a rookie walking in the, 
walking into the 305. And now, you know, four years, about to be five years later, it's like, dang, like I've developed like a home here. Like, uh, like uh, this is a part of me now. And uh, for my next step, you know, just working on my whole arsenal. I always say that um, there's no particular thing. Uh, I want to be great at everything. That's that's my mindset. Thank you. Next up, we'll go to Akiko. Hi, Pam. How are you? How are you doing? Uh, Hi, thank you. Um, you know, since three players joined the team from the finals, what has been changed or what part uh, has been improved as a team? Uh, we got more depth. We definitely got more depth. And, uh, you know, Drew's been a great asset for us. So has Chris. And, you know, all our guys were unselfish. And, you know, we generally get along. So it's easy to be on the court and make the extra pass. It's easy for everybody to just share the basketball because at the end of the day, we're some of the best players in our sport. So, you know, it's easy. It's easy to, to defer to somebody else and, uh, you know, help somebody else. I'll get somebody else a shot because you all believe in each other and you've seen what each other can do during the regular season plus playoffs. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Next up, we'll go to Brian Colbert. Bam, what's going on, brother? You talk about going into your fifth season of the NBA and you talk about trying to go to that next level, playing with all this Olympic talent. You just got done playing championship basketball not even two years ago, and now you're playing with a ton of Olympic talent. How is that going to help you going into this next season and getting to that next level? Uh, you know, definitely just, uh, just being around them, seeing their work ethic you know, seeing how they go about their professional business and uh, seeing what I can do differently and uh, seeing the small ways to, you know, the, the, the little ways of getting a foul or, you know, getting extra baskets or looking at the game differently from their standpoints. Because, you know, like you said, you got some of, the, some of the best players in our league. So why not pick their brain to see how they can, how they got to the next level? Is there any one teammate that has been in your ear a lot since you've been in Japan? Uh, I wouldn't say been in my ear, but, you know, getting to talk to him and getting, getting that chemistry with is uh, Dame, you know, just because he's had, you know, he, I play center, he plays point guard. So it's kind of, you got to build a, a connection in the pick and roll. But uh, <clears throat> just just being in his ear and just seeing how he, uh, how he thinks the game and also Drew Holiday, uh, just seeing how they both just look at the game. And I, I talk to Drew mainly from a defensive standpoint and, uh, you know, how he gets steals, just, you know, his his instincts uh, off ball. Uh, 